Hello and welcome. I think this is going to be one of my shortest videos ever, but I just wanted to share a quick thing that I came across recently that I've never come across before uh, that I felt the world should know about, which is a word of warning about using data tables. So if you don't know about data tables, then this is probably not relevant to you, although I encourage you to go and look them up. But uh, so I was working on a financial model, not this one, but not one I can share with you. So this will do instead. This is from a financial modeling World Cup case, March 2021. Um, the idea is we have a financial model. We want to do a sensitivity to see what's going to happen if we change one variable, what's going to happen to some other variable. In this case, I'm interested in what happens to our total net income over the life of the model, which right now is $49.4 million, uh, if I change our foreign sales volume in 2020 uh, up or down 10 percentage points. Uh, sorry, 10 percentage points. It's not a percentage. Up or down 10%. Uh, so right now, foreign sales volume is $2 million. Uh, 2 million kilograms, uh, and I want to know what happens if I make it 2.2 million, what happens if I make it 1.8 million. Um, and I, I think, so th this is not normally how I would make a data table. I would normally just have hard-coded values in here, and you know maybe you're interested in what happens with every value between 1 million and 3 million and steps of 100,000 or steps of 500,000 or whatever. Um, but in this case, the ask was specifically... Um, I think it was toward kind of building a tornado chart or something like that to say, you know, which variables is the model most sensitive to? And so the idea was to say, what if we put this one up or down by 10%? What if we put this one up or down by five percentage points? What if we move this one up or down by, you know, move this date forward or back by one year and so on to say, which things are we most sensitive to? Uh, and so what I wanted was to be able to say, even if this uh, where's it going? Even if this assumption changed, let's say somebody late, later makes it 2.5 million, that this would still be that plus or minus 10%. Um, and it turned out, I, I always encourage you to kind of, you know, stop and do a sense check. Uh, and I, I looked at this and I saw something very much like this, which was, you know, some effect size on the way up uh, and then some much smaller, much smaller effect size on the way down. And that's not impossible in a model because there can be discontinuities or thresholds or whatever. But in this case, it didn't seem right to me. And so I went and poked around a bit. Um, and specifically, you know, if you if you have a data table telling you that, well, this becomes this and this becomes this, uh, it's kind of reducing everything down to one cell. But you can take these values, go plug them in up here, and then go and look at all the rest of the model to see how it flows through. So I did that. I did some comparisons and so on. Eventually, I realized if I just take this, so just keep an eye on this number. The starting point is 49.4 million. It goes to 49.378. So in other words, just a slightly lower 49.4. If I take that 1.8 and put it in up here, <coughs> paste value, then the number that I get is now 48.97. So in other words, several hundred thousand lower as opposed to just uh, as opposed to just a few tens of thousands lower. Um, and so even though this uh, even though this data table is supposed to be saying, what does this become if I put this value in up there, if I put this value in up there, it's actually not doing that. And after a little bit more kind of poking around, I figured out what was going on, which is uh, it takes this value, puts it into the, the input cell, calculates this value, and then it takes the value that is then here. But this value is pointing to the variable cell, which currently has this higher value in it. And so instead of getting you know, 0 0.9 times the initial value, which gives you the 1.8 million, you get 0 0.9 times the previously inflated value. Uh, so in other words, it's kind of 10% up times 1.1, and then 10% down times 0 0.9, which gives you 99%. Uh, so in other words, the effect size is much smaller because here you end up with uh, with 1.98 million compared to a baseline of 2 as opposed to 1.8 million compared to a baseline of 2. And you can kind of quickly check that. If I hard code the number 1.98, this number doesn't change. Whereas if I hard code the number that is in there right now, just copy paste values, that number changes. And now you have a similar effect size both up and down. Um, so... <laughs> It's always an interesting debate whether a particular thing is a feature or a bug. Uh, there are some interesting sort of iterative things and circularities and, and odd things that you could do if you if you're aware of this. Uh, you could do some kind of creative things with a data table, feeding and iterating and changing a calculation. But in what seems to me like the more likely use case that you're interested in saying, what if I move this up 10 percent and what if I move it down 10 percent? you're at high risk of just getting the answer wrong. And I, I don't know of a way, that, well, the only way that I can think of to work around it is if you set this multiple to be, you know, uh, 
divided by 1.1 times 0 0.9. So in other words, basically cancel out the previous movement and then add in the new movement. Then this would calculate correctly. This would be labeled incorrectly. But if you're, you know, if you're kind of hiding that or if that's not feeding through into output cells, then at least that would allow you to calculate in a dynamic way. But it would be extremely confusing for anybody uh, reviewing your model who didn't know this weird intricacy. So yeah, that's just a word of warning. Data tables do not behave quite as I thought they did. Uh, that's all I got for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.